So we have to know how to prepare salts. Now to do that, what we need to know is that salt preparation depends on different techniques, all of those depending on three factors. Number one, knowing whether the salt is soluble or insoluble. Number two, what reagents you will be using to prepare that salt. And number three, how you will extract that salt. Okay, so that, those three questions you have to answer for making any salt preparation successful. Now for that, it's important to know what salts are soluble and what are insoluble. Now you can refer to your notes to figure out which salts are soluble and insoluble, and that will give you a pretty good idea of what to include and what not. Now here's the thing, let's suppose a salt is soluble. Now to prepare soluble salts, what we do is that we use acid plus metal or acid plus alkali. If you can't have an alkali, you can also use another base, which is basically an insoluble salt. All right, so here's the thing. Acid plus metal will give us soluble salt as long as obviously the acid and metal coincide with the solubility rules. And for that, what you need to make sure is that because the salt is soluble, it will be aqueous at the end. So whenever you are getting an aqueous salt, the first rule to remember is that any aqueous reactant should be limiting so that you can obviously extract the salt later on. All right. Now, second thing you must know is that do I want to collect salt or make salt that is the group one salt? So that's the second thing you need to know. Now, if you have a group one salt, that means you're going to use a method called titration. And of course, that depends on acid and alkali. So we will take titration for that. So how do we do it? First of all, we will mention the acid, the alkali. So let's suppose I want to make sodium chloride. So I will take sodium hydroxide and that will be aqueous and HCl, which will also be aqueous. So I will take both of them and do the titration. So here's how you do titration. What you do is that first of all, you take 25 cm cube of alkali or acid, whatever you do. So let's suppose we add the acid. So take 25 cm cube of acid using a pipette and add to conical flask. Okay, that's first step. Then you add a couple of drops of the indicator. This will tell us how much of alkali we need to add. Next, run the alkali from the burette, obviously, into the conical flask. until the end point. End point is basically when the indicator changes color. Now you will take the same volume. Now you know how much volume of acid to take, how much volume of alkali to take, but of course salt is made, but it will be tainted with the indicator as a mixture. So we will repeat the process without indicator. and same volume of alkali. Now you have made a pure sample of this salt that you need. But of course, you need to extract it now. So what you do is because it's a soluble salt, we will heat the solution to saturation point or crystallization point. So basically you're getting all the water or any other solvent out here and then slowly cool. And this way you have, you would have made a very pure sample 
of the salt for group one soluble salts all right what if the salt that we are trying to make is not a group one salt but it is still soluble salt so we still need an acid alkali or an acid base so i would always suggest going for acid and base and the reason for that is that acid will be aqueous but base will be solid and so you can get the aqueous part in limiting because that is the first rule that we need to adhere to all right so what if we do not have group one but still a soluble salt so what should we do in that case again we know the solubility now we need to know how to prepare it and what reagents to use so let's suppose i want to make copper 2 sulfate now that will depend on where i get my copper 2 from i could get it from any insoluble base that could be copper oxide copper hydroxide copper carbonate all right and i will also need the acid that acid will provide me with in this case sulfate if i wanted to produce chloride i will need hcl because it will provide me with chloride so that's the next thing that mix the solid that you have so obviously the base name the base in the exam in excess remember this part we need the solid to be in excess with dilute or aqueous acid all right so we have mixed it and then if you're using a carbonate do it until no bubbles are seen because all the acid will completely react when you don't have any more carbon dioxide coming out all right so we keep on mixing it and then next thing to do is obviously filter and the reason we are filtering it because we want the extra unreacted base to be collected as a residue we need to get it out of the mixture that we have so filter to extract or remove extra solid all right so our salt is soluble it's part of the filter it now now we will crystallize it so heat the filtrate to crystallization point or saturation point and slowly cool now if you do not want crystals then instead of saying heat to crystallization point we will say so this is one step if you want crystals but if you don't want crystals then what you can do is if you want a dry sample then instead of heating this or instead of writing that you should mention that heat the filtrate to constant mass what it does is it makes sure that there is no water remaining in fact any water crystallization also evaporates so that is what we should do all right so that is how you get the soluble salt which is not group one what if we want to get insoluble salt now for insoluble salt you have to remember that it the salt collected will be a precipitate so we'll need to filter that out all right so how do we do it we go around by taking any soluble salts remember this thing the idea behind this is that you take a salt that is soluble you add it to another salt that is soluble double displacement reaction happens which you already know about and we get another soluble salt but also an insoluble salt and this is the thing we are looking for we will extract it using filtration and then we'll try it so here you go so we have two soluble salts of course it depends what salt you want to make let's suppose i want to make silver chloride so for that i will need one salt with silver nitrate for example any silver soluble salt and another salt which will have chloride which will be soluble as well so i could take sodium chloride so there you go you have to understand what those salts are you have to select them then you mix the two salts okay you could use a conical flask for that which is really good at mixing two things and then it's narrow opening basically ensures that it doesn't spill out and it can easily swirl because of that and then once you have mixed it then what you need to do is filter the mixture now that way you're ensuring that this soluble salt is extracted as the residue 
and then you must mention that dry the residue in folds of filter paper. This way you will get a dry sample of an insoluble salt. And those are the three different ways of making these salts in the lab in our syllabus.